Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here on the rooftop of where I'm staying right now. It's out of focus, but uh, yeah, there you go. There's the city. Well, not really. I'm kind of on the outskirts of the city. Uh, but yeah, so I am on the rooftop because this is where I can talk normally in a normal voice without disturbing other people. Uh, the rooftop is where we do, I'm going to give you a tour of our rooftop. It's where we do laundry. We, we're doing laundry today because it's actually like nice and sunny today. It's like, I think today is like 85 degrees or something like that. Uh, which is really good and I'm actually kind of glad I'm not home because apparently it's been like a hundred plus and I thought that Japanese weather was going to be terrible and I was completely wrong because it, it's it been a blessing being here really um, but yeah so I'm here doing a Q&A video a Q&A video yeah let me like sit somewhere I don't know where I can sit or like where I should sit is this okay maybe this is better yeah, so I'm here doing a Q&A video. I asked people on Facebook, on a makeup group, and on Instagram to ask me some questions about life in Japan. So I have been here for about a month and a half now. I'm here until July 24th when I'll be going back home. So I'm here on a scholarship and I was asked what kind of scholarship that I receive. The scholarship that I got is specific to my university. It is the Francis L. Phillips Scholarship. It is a travel scholarship, so it's basically meant for traveling. Like, I'm not studying, I'm not going to class or anything like that. Uh, it's actually a really, really great scholarship, and you don't need, like, there aren't, like, super, super big requirements for it. Basically, you just have to have never gone out of the country before. Your family can't make too much money or anything like that, so it's their way of helping those in need with possibly less opportunity to go outside of the country. So I'm really thankful for this scholarship. They award you up to $9,000. Um, I'm not going to share how much I got from the scholarship, so you know we're going to keep that confidential. But yeah, so you get to choose what country so you get to choose what country you want to go to, and I chose Japan. You can choose more than one if you want. That is completely up to you. And upon applying for the scholarship, you had to create your own project. So whenever I went to the ceremony for, you know, congratulating everyone, some people had some really cool projects. And I was just like, wow, like mine doesn't even seem that great compared compared to theirs. Uh, mine is basically just looking at the beauty in Japan and just like I guess Asia in general and comparing it to the US. So I'm focusing a lot on uh, landscape, I'm focusing on structures and of course on cosmetics uh, because that's obviously something very big and very much out there in all societies so that that's what my focus is. It's something that I find that I'm really passionate about. So <laughs> I guess it's also kind of an excuse for me to go out there and like try cosmetics in Japan. Yeah. So that is the scholarship that I got. And I'm sorry about the shakiness. I don't have my tripod with me and I'm kind of just here. And there's like obviously like nowhere really to sit, you know? Yeah, so like I'm just using my arm. It's my workout for the day. <laughs> Uh, let's see, next question. How did you plan out your stay? Like, did you plan out what and where you're going to, where you were going to visit prior to your trip? So basically, my scholarship, I had to do everything. They didn't give me a place to stay or, you know, anything like that. So I had to find everything myself. Uh, I, I booked a lot of, not a lot, but <laughs> I decided to set myself in two places, Kyoto and Tokyo, because those are the big cities. And from these two places, you can get to a lot of other like well-known places in Japan. So uh, those are the two places I, I've stayed at, or right now I, I am in Tokyo. I used Airbnb to book my place in Kyoto. And then I used Guest House Bank to book my place here in Tokyo. So as far as planning everything out, I planned out where I was staying, 
as far as places where I've, I decided to visit, that went on a day-to-day -day basis. Or, you know, I decided like, oh, okay, let's go to this temple today. Or, hey, let's go to like Osaka today. And, you know, just things like that. Um, I wasn't going to plan like every single step. Uh, I just made a list of places I wanted to visit and make sure that I hit those places up. Because I think that's one of the best things to do. I feel like it's so much more memorable when you just go explore instead of like having a schedule, a strict schedule because then it's like you don't really get to see things I guess. Does that make sense? Because more than likely the places you're going to are high in tourists um, or like hot spots, like tourist attractions and so you only get to see like the only people you see are other tourists and the only thing you experience are other things that tourists have experienced as well. So sometimes it's nice to just go off into a small alleyway or something like that and see like what's around in the city. Uh, yeah, so let's look at the next question. How is it like over there? Tell us about your everyday routine. Um, so right now in Tokyo, right now, okay, so right now I'm having like insomnia. I don't sleep until like 5 a.m. and like the schedule isn't even normal for being back home. Like not at all. Uh, yeah, so right now I've been having such difficulty sleeping. I haven't been falling asleep till like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. and then I don't wake up until 2 which sounds really bad but like I can't figure it out. And I, I'm not about like getting sleep medicine either because I don't. I don't know my medications, my Japanese medications well enough to go and do that, you know, especially when I won't know everything, all the risks and things like that. So pretty much that's my routine now is waking up at like 1, 2 a.m. Oh, p.m. And then I wake up, I get ready, I eat, um, and then we go somewhere if we're going somewhere that day. And if not, then I just stay in and I blog, I guess. I put on makeup. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. Let's see, have you seen a geisha around? Um, let's see. Tokyo doesn't have any. Tokyo does not have any. Um, and then in Kyoto, I I can't say whether or not I have because in Kyoto, like, there's so many uh, kimono rental places around. Like, so. Yeah, there's so many kimono rental places around and there are a lot of salons that will dress you up as the geisha or a gecko, which is what they call it in Kyoto. Um, so I can't say whether or not I have because a lot of tourists, they go and then they dress up in kimono. They get a kimono rental for the day. It's like $30 about. And, and then they go to the salon and they get their hair done like a geisha and then they go get their makeup done like a geisha so if you see one in Kyoto chances are it's probably a tourist um, if you do see a real one uh, one who has that profession the actual profession chances are she's busy so I know a lot of times uh, they get irritated if people ask for pictures I, I may or may not have seen one I don't know and I actually didn't go to any of the performances either, so I can't say. <laughs> How is beauty scene in Japan different from the US? I think a lot from what I've seen, women here, they their makeup is much more natural looking, definitely more natural looking, and uh, they do a lot of like Morty girl type makeup. It's it, technically, it, <laughs> it translates to like forest girl. Um, this, yeah, so this is how it looks like. I'll show you a picture of it. So you can see in the picture, like, they wear their blush, like, really high up, and they have, like, super pale faces, so I, I see a lot of women wearing their makeup like that. Their makeup looks a lot more fresh than ours do, than, like, our makeup, our mainstream makeup looks. Um, which I think is really interesting because it's like for us just having like a super pale face and no contour would be like completely undone 
uh, compared to here where it's like you pile on blush, you wear maybe some false lashes, some mascara, and then you have and I think the thing that they focus most on is concealing blemishes and pimples. Um, so they do a lot more like spot treatment, well not treatment, spot concealing. What were your first couple days like and what was it like trying to get around to where you want to go to? Um, also I often hear that Japanese are racist towards people who are not Japanese and what has been your experience been like in that aspect. So the first couple of days I was definitely catching up on sleep. I think when I got to Kyoto because getting to Kyoto from Tokyo I took an overnight bus and it was like a nine hour drive. Um, yeah. So I was definitely catching up on sleep, sleeping in a real bed, not in a chair. Um, like even if the chairs are comfortable, it's you know your your neck gets really tired and it's just it is very stressful traveling like that. Um, as far as transportation, I think in Kyoto transporting by bus is a lot easier. Yeah, it's definitely easier, more convenient. Yeah, but in Tokyo definitely travel by the monorail because it's cheaper. It's so much cheaper than taking a bus. Taking a bus, um, I think it costs like 230 yen. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think traveling by bus uh, take, it costs about 230 yen each way. But if you take the train, the monorail, the subway, whatever, then it costs, it costs depending on how far you go. And if you use their cards, um, I have a Suica card. They have the Suica, Ikoka, um, I don't know what else there is. But if you use those cards, they give you like a 6 yen discount or something from the price. Uh, I guess because it's more eco-friendly. You don't buy a ticket, you don't waste paper and everything like that. Um, excuse me, but it's definitely cheaper to travel by train, sub, monorail, things like that in Tokyo. Uh, as far as racism, I everyone here has been extremely friendly. I've never experienced that and I don't want to group up, you know, a whole population of people. I've experienced nothing but kindness here. So I don't think that's something that you have to worry about. So just a few things I want to talk about because I think they're quite interesting. But um, clothing shopping here is really interesting. Not interesting, but like clothing shopping here is definitely different than clothing shopping in the States. Um, obviously because of just like customs, whenever you go clothing shopping, you have to remember to take off your shoes before you go into the fitting room. And if you're a woman, they will give you this this veil to put over your face so that way you don't get makeup on the clothes and it's like the materials kind of like dryer sheets but basically you like veil it over your face and then you put on the clothes over it because they don't want you know like makeup on their clothes and I actually really think that it is a great idea the US should really adopt that because I there's nothing more I hate then going into a clothing shop, trying on something, but before trying it on, I see like foundation like all over the collar or something like that. I don't know. Like, oh. <laughs> if you're, I think if you're larger than a large, a US large, it's gonna be difficult to find clothing that fits you unless you go to uh, stores that are familiar in the American market. Yeah, so stores like Uniqlo, Gap, American Eagle, that will be fine, but like, other Japanese stores you probably may or may not fit their clothing and as far as like cosmetic shopping you can find like everything at, almost almost everything at the drugstore like there is no discrimination or segregation in the drugstore because you can find like Maybelline in the drugstore and then like on the other side of the aisle you have like SK2, Kose, things like that um, of course prices are you know the same pretty much as the US but there's nothing like bad about the drugstores here there's testers for everything you have like mascara testers I'm sure people don't use it but you can like take a look at the wand and look at the consistency of the mascara you can test eyeshadows from like Maybelline and eyeliners and like everything like that and it's just awesome there's no like oh you got it from the drugstore type of stigma you know that you get from the u.s 
Uh, I think that's changing now because a lot of drugstore brands are like, they're getting better. Like their products are definitely getting better. Um, yeah, but over here it's like, oh yeah, you know, I bought SK2 from the drugstore. Yeah, so like cosmetic shopping here is a dream. Like it is amazing. So I will see you all very soon. Thank you much. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Give this a thumbs up if you found it useful, helpful, or whatever. Yeah, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.